Okay, in this video, I want to address a certain type of integration by parts problem that is common enough to give it sort of a name, and I call it uh, the wraparound problems, or maybe I don't call it, but I've heard it called that. Um, and it, these type of problems um, come up whenever you have something like maybe like an exponential multiplied by a trig function. And the reason that these types of problems are kind of unique is that they don't contain a power function, something that decreases um, in degree every time you differentiate it. So it actually does not get simpler as you go forward. And so we'll see in a second here that when we try to apply integration by parts, the integral doesn't appear to get simpler, yet it still is solvable by integration by parts. And in fact, as far as I know, it's the only way to solve it. Um, and so let's sort of go and, and see what we're talking about here. So if I, by the way, if we look at this, we should be able to tell that this is not solvable by u substitution. You know, if I let u equal e to the x, that's not helpful. There's no substitution I can do with that um, that will make that simpler. If I let u equal sine of x, again, if I uh, differentiate that, <clears throat> there's nothing I can do with that um, derivative to make this any simpler. So this is definitely an integration by parts problem. We just have to choose what we want for u and what we want for dv. And in this case, it's not obvious because neither of these really get simpler as you go on. So you don't really have any particular uh, bias towards what your u is, except for the fact that for dv, e to the x is going to be easier just because the integral is always e to the x. So why not just choose that for dv? And I'll choose sine of x to be our u. That sort of makes it easier. dv. So off to the side here, we have u is equal to sine of x. And du is then equal to cosine of x dx. And dv is e to dx dx. And so v is just e to the x. Okay, so now we're going to try this out. We always want to be sure to write the integral that we're trying to solve. So that way it's sort of always at the forefront of our minds that that's what we're trying to get to. So if it pops up, if this integral pops up again on the right side, we recognize it and we realize, hey, wait, this is going to be able to be wrapped around, if you will, to the, you know, and combine the terms. And that will allow us to sort of stop this infinite loop and, and just solve the problem. So that might not be clear yet, but it will be in a second when I'm, when I'm talking about. So anyways, um, we need uv. That's e to the x is v and u is sine of x minus the integral of v du. v is e to the x, du is cosine of x dx. So it doesn't look like we've done anything really to get any any progress towards our answer because we have the same for a VDU it's like the same sort of form that we started out with. We have an exponential times a trig function but if we do one more iteration it's going to become clear why this is solvable. So let me again for this integral here use um, u equals cosine of, so I'm using the integration by parts again I'm letting u equal cosine of x that means du is equal to negative sine of x dx and dv is e to the x dx and v is just e to the x there okay so here I have the integral of e to the x sine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine of x minus this, you know, I, I need to use integration by parts. So it's minus this entire integral. I'm going to put it in uh, parentheses here. So it's uh, u times v. So we have e to the x times cosine of x minus v du. So here, v is e to the x du is negative sine of x. I'm going to bring that negative out front and make that a plus there. So we have sine of x dx. 
And now hopefully you see this integral here, our, our VDU is the integral that we started out trying to solve. It appeared again on the right side of the equation. This should let you know when you see this happen that you need to not continue on because you're just going to keep making this loop and you're going to be, you know, just spinning wheels for no reason. Here, you just need to, you know, distribute this negative sign and then move this term to the other side of the equality. Make it, you know, combine combine your like terms. So, real quickly here, I'm going to distribute the negative sign so we can see what's going on. So we have e to the x times sine of x minus e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of e to the x sine of x dx. Okay, so this this entire integral can be moved. Just like any other you know function, any other term, it can be moved to the uh, left side. So we can do it simply by adding that entire integral to both sides. Right, so we add that to both sides, and we'll see that on the left side, we're adding like terms. We had one of them, we added another one, therefore we have two of these integrals, 2e to the x sine of x dx. And now, so this is where this term wraparound sort of comes in, is your, your function sort of wraps around or loops back to where you originally started. So um, here I have e to the x in both terms. I'm just going to factor that out. e to the x times sine of x minus cosine of x. And I could wait to the very end to plug in, or not plug in, but you know, add in my constant. I'm going to put it in now just for so I can demonstrate something here. So I'm almost done, but we want to get rid of this 2 here, so we need to divide both sides by 2. And we want to divide this entire thing by 2. And so, there's cancel. And we finally see that e to the x sine of x dx is equal to 1 half e to the x times sine of x minus cosine of x plus just c. And notice I didn't put plus c over 2. The reason I did that is because the it the division by 2 gets absorbed into the constant. Dividing some constant by 2 is still a constant. So there's no need to write c over 2. Now, you know, technically this constant here is is different from that constant there and we could write subscripts to differentiate between the two. Uh, this is not really necessary in this problem cuz you just have a single constant. There's no need to to differentiate between them. But I just wanted to show that in case you've seen that in your class and you're wondering what's going on. You know, you don't need that there because it, it just gets absorbed into the constant term. Okay, so this is our answer. And I hope you see now when when you would do something like this, it should stand out to you from the beginning that if you have something like an exponential which doesn't change as you differentiate it or integrate it, right? multiplied by a trigonometric function which just it's cyclical as you take its derivatives it just you know it, it runs through you know positives and negative sines and cosines and it gets back to where it was you do that enough times you know you're gonna get back the same exact integral you can wrap it around you'll have some coefficient here you need to divide everything by that coefficient and that'll be the answer um, so I'll do one more example of this in another video a tad bit harder just to sort of demonstrate how it's done.